Christina Werner here. Welcome to another mail art video for SimonSysStamp.com. Today I'm starting out with an Audrey Blue envelope from Simon. It has a little self-adhesive sticker on the flap. And I'm going to take the nested heart die set and pick out a heart to go on this design. So this kind of mid-sized one looked a little too big to me, so I went with the smaller medium size. And I'm going to go ahead and cut some masking paper using this heart die. I just used some Simon masking paper. And then I'm going to apply the heart to the envelope. And I want to make sure that I'm mindful of where the heart is placed because the postage stamps on this envelope will be going in the top right corner. So I'm putting it more to the left and a little bit farther down. That's going to give me a little more space in that top corner. So I'm putting down a tonic easy clean mat for my surface so that I have a slick surface to blend on. Please ignore the stains. That was some alcohol ink that didn't come off, but uh, it shouldn't affect today's project. So I'm starting out with some Mermaid Lagoon Distress Ink, and I'm using a mini round blending tool to blend this ink color onto the bottom section of this envelope. The area that is covered by the heart mask will remain the same light blue color as the envelope, while the bottom portion of the envelope will have this blending on it. I want to make sure that I bring that blending all the way up and just barely over the top of that heart so that I get a nice clean edge of that heart. I don't want it to um, completely go into that blue because otherwise the top edge of the heart won't even be seen. So to darken up the bottom area, I'm going to use some chipped sapphire distress ink. And this is going to intensify the color kind of ombre or blending to the bottom of this envelope. It gives it a little bit more intensity and gives it a really, really cool look. So I've done with the blending and I'm going to use this brushed branches stamp from Simon. And this is one that came out recently and it's just one big, huge red rubber stamp. I'm using my Misty stamp positioning tool and I've placed my envelope inside with the magnet holding it in place and I'm going to pull uh, pull down that door and transfer the stamp to the door and then I realized I needed to remove that foam pad inside my Misty that is so it will accommodate the thicker red rubber stamp I'm using some VersaFine onyx black ink and I'm going to be stamping this directly onto the envelope and I'm just using the top portion of this tree. It's gonna look really cool, more like just vines coming up from the bottom. And I'm using a black color because I thought it would uh, be a really fun contrast with all these blues. You could also do white ink or even do some embossing. I think that would look really pretty. So I'm going to remove the mask now and I'm just using my scissors just to get that edge up. Um, so my nails are painted and sometimes I don't like getting them really messy with the ink so I'll use scissors or um, some tweezers or just something sharp to get under that edge of the mask. So now I'm going to work on addressing the envelope and the first thing I'm going to do is take this black pen. This is a pilot envelope addressing pen. And this is the extra fine version and I'm going to draw a line around that heart. This is just going to emphasize the area and give it a little bit of a border. And I'm doing a really, really thin line. It doesn't matter if it's thick or thin. You could use a thicker, uh, thicker pen for this if you felt the need or if that's what you have on hand. And I'm going to do an address that isn't too lengthy. The one that I'm using today is from a viewer and she has given me permission to use her address. So thank you so much, Dina. And I just want to let you guys know that you will have to adjust the size of the heart or even how you write the address depending on the length of the address. So her address seemed to work pretty well. The street address wasn't too long and the city name wasn't too long. It worked out really, really well. If you have someone in mind for your envelope that has a very lengthy address, you might consider using a larger heart or even changing the shape. You could make the shape a large rectangle or anything like that and it would work really well. So you'll notice that as I'm going over the penciled address, that especially on the second line, I'm not going over where I wrote the, uh, the name. And that's because I realized as I was writing the name that it was really squished over on the one side. So when I came in with my pen, I kind of slid everything over a little bit so that I would have more space on the right edge. 
Same thing happens when I get down to the other areas of the address. The pencil is just sort of like a preliminary rough draft. It gives me an idea of where I need to have the letters and then it gives me a little bit more control when I do the actual writing. So I used my eraser just to erase all that pencil, and then I added my return address on the back of the envelope on the flap, just right along the bottom. So that is basically finishing with the card design. The last thing to do is add some poster stamps. Like I said before, I'm putting the poster stamps in the top right corner. So I'm going to put this first one on, and I'm gonna place it up there in the top corner. These two stamps that I've chosen have those same blue shades in them that I use for the envelope design. I thought it would work really well. And I'm particularly using a 26 cent stamp because the card that I'm planning to put inside is a little bit thicker, so it is non-machinable, meaning it needs an extra 20 cents. So that extra 26, it's a little bit more than 20, it'll be just perfect. I added a few more lines on her name just to make that kind of accidental double line on the N look a little bit more intentional. That's the envelope for today, for this month actually. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in another video very soon. Mm -hmm.